pretty laneways and tiny balconies. This is Alfama, the oldest quarter of Portugal's capital, Lisbon. This maze of narrow winding streets presents a wonderful slice of life. What's your name? Huh? Your name? So what is the girl? Oh. <laughs> Portugal often brings to mind such scenes of cobblestone streets and quaint fishing villages. For centuries, the Portuguese artists have incorporated these images into their work. The world-renowned painted tiles are a prime example. Lisbon's Museo Nacional do Azulejo, the Tile Museum, houses a stunning collection. The tradition of painting tiles started with the Arab influence in the early 15th century. Each tile is like a piece of a jigsaw puzzle, fitting perfectly to reveal Portuguese lifestyle, culture and history through the centuries. Cross the Teju River to Saint Simu Art and you can watch the traditional tile making process at a local workshop. 17th century designs are copied onto huge sheets of tissue paper and are transferred to the tiles by pricking charcoal through the tissue. Next, the artisan hand paints the design using the marks as guides. Original photographs are used for accuracy and color, and the finished product contain hundreds of tiles reaching six feet long and four feet high. The town of Evora, not far from Lisbon, is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that's full of wonderful restaurants and buildings. Evora is also the scene of a somewhat macabre display, the Capella des Ossos, or Chapel of Bones. The bones of 5,000 nuns and monks hang from the walls and pillars of this small chapel. You won't want to spend too long in here. Things are a little livelier in Queluche, an 18th century pink palace, described as Portugal's Versailles, that lies just west of Lisbon. If you're lucky, you may catch one of the spontaneous medieval reenactments put on by the local schools and city council. And inside the Queluche Palace, there are even more reenactments scullery maids doing the washing sewing lessons for fair maidens and even young princes enduring a math lesson. The historical town center of Sintra has also been designated a World Heritage Site by UNESCO and encompasses hillside mansions rising up to Penna Park and a nearby Moorish castle. With plenty of cafes it's a good place to break for lunch. Save some room for dessert though. After a visit to the castle of Penna, you might have a craving for something sweet and sugary, maybe a little gingerbread. This castle was born from the imagination of King Ferdinand II, a German prince who married Queen Maria II of Portugal. He commissioned his military engineer, the Baron von Eschweg, to build this castle, described by many architects as an extremely sensitive creation. Just one of the many fascinating day tours in this historical region of Portugal. For more information, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.